Well guys, I apologize that the studio is a complete mess, but I guess the real question is, when your shop or studio is a mess, is it truly a mess when you know where everything is? That's the question of the century. But today guys, I'm really pumped because we're not only gonna look at this giant collaboration of blades that I have here on the table, and I'm not sure we'll get through all these blades, but we'll definitely take a look at a lot of them as we discuss combat knives and why we love them, what makes up a good combat knife, as kind of a part two to the recent review I did on the Spartan Blades in collaboration with K-Bar Harsey Fighter that we have right here just brings so much to the table and there's so many good competitive options. So we'll break that down, kind of using this as our template today as we just have a fun time discussing survival knives, combat knives, daggers, and just what what's good, what's not. So let's do go ahead and get diving in. I'm going to attach to the mount here and we'll get going. So to kick things off, what brings so much blade appeal to a combat knife, or sometimes called a field knife, like this Spartan K-Bar collaboration here? Well, I really believe it's because they bring us some of the capabilities of a double-edged dagger, like this Joker Lintz up here, and some of the capabilities of a survival knife or a camping knife, like this SE6, and then they combine those two together. With a camping or survival knife, a lot of times you have wide, broad blades, a lot of times high saber or flat grinds, even hollow grinds sometimes, drop points or spear points are really classic with that. And really focusing on you know simple ergonomics, nothing crazy outside the box there. And then on the flip side, daggers you know are designed for basically one thing, piercing, penetrating, stabbing. So they usually have really good guards and really deep traction points. Oftentimes this is more of a classic style, but jimping points all over the place. And then a very precise piercing tip with lower, usually flat, sometimes hollow grinds. And so when you combine those two, what you often get in a combat knife is like crossover capability. It's like the SUV of fixed blades. And I think that's why a lot of us really gravitate to it. Why are SUVs so popular? Because they give you a lot of capability. They're not like a full blown truck, but they're not a car either. And that's what you get with this style and so many others that we're about to look at is that yes, you get some ergonomics, but there's definitely heavy traction points, deep guards. You have a lower flat grind. And you know, a lot of times they're gonna have clip points or swedges, you know, things like that that are designed more for piercing but still giving you a lot of outdoor or woodscraft capability, more so than what you're not gonna go camping with a dagger and try and like, you know, build a fire or do some sort of notching and triggers and traps. I mean, if you had to in a pinch, but that's not the ideal tool. So that's why I really believe combat knives and quote unquote field knives are just so addicting and so many of us love it because they give us both of those capabilities. Now, as we begin to unpack more of this, if you missed out on the full review with the full field test, on the Harsey Fighter and Nesmuk, I would encourage you to go check out that video. There will be a link in the description of this video for you to go check out that video uh, so that you can get a better understanding if you missed out. But for, I know a lot of you, you saw that video. So let's dive right in. I wanna, before we move on from daggers, cause I don't actually only own two fixed blade daggers currently. This is the Joker uh, Lintz and it is made with uh, one point 4116 steel, so that is a stainless steel made in Spain. You can get these for like 80 bucks. And I mean, it's got that classic iconic style that again, think through what you're doing. If this is a tool that's designed mainly for self-defense, th there's not much better than a double-edged dagger right there. And that you can score a stainless steel version for you know under a hundred bucks. And in comparison, here is the Zabo Express from Tops Knives. This is an awesome modern dagger. Really cool, you can get it two edge or single edge sharpening. Uh, but I mean, you know, that's designed mainly for stabbing and piercing. I mean, that's what it's ideally used for. There's a lot of good traction points, amazing flare out of the guard, nice hook portion so you can pull out from a pierce. That one's like 160, 165 on average, Kydex sheath. Really cool option if you are looking for literally a self-defense tool, and that's really why you're carrying the blade. But if you're not, that's where you're probably really battling between a lot of other combat knives or survival knives. And that's really where we're gonna start unpacking stuff. Now, as a quick refresher, real fast, USA made Crovan 1095 steel, 
uh, 0.19 on the thickness, high flat grind, polymer, ambidextrous sheath. This guy is running for about 130 ballpark on average and they're becoming more and more accessible. So about 130 is what the K-Bar goes for. Now an SE, six like this guy with Contour G10 or Micarta, uh, this guy can be scored for about the same price, maybe 140 on average. Lots of handle color combinations, full flat grind, 1095 steel, also gonna have that ambidextrous polymer sheath. Now, if we're gonna go camping, and that's what we're doing, and I know that's what we're doing, I mean, the SE6 with its lifetime, no questions asked warranty, just less you know, jimping and traction points and that full flat grind, I mean, it's amazing. And it's gonna be my choice for a camping tool because of those features. But if I'm gonna put it in a go bag and you put these two down, or I'm going on deployment, I'm going to gravitate more to this uh, Harsey fighter just because of that better swedge, better piercing, a little bit more strength in that tip, arguably, and that saber grind, and then the traction points really locking me into place for piercing, stabbing, just harder tasks, where this is definitely more designed for fine-tuned, carving, long-cutting tasks. That's where that SE is going to totally shine. Now, I know a lot of you are asking me about this model, and this is going to be probably the best valued blade on today's video the K-Bar Turok. Still made in America, same steel, Corovan 1095, about the same blade length, about the same thickness, full tank construction, ambidextrous, polymer sheath, still can be scored for about $90. 100 for sure. I wouldn't pay more than 100 right now for this in 2023. And that is a crazy good deal. So if you just need value and a lot of performance, the Turok is still like king, I would say, <laughs> of the dinosaurs and of the blades. Um, now, things to consider though, it's not perfect in every way. Uh, what we have is a massive swedge up here, which is awesome. And I would argue piercing power is going to be just as good, if not even better, than what you're going to get on this Spartan Harsey. The difference, and same grind, about same grind, about same blade sweep, maybe a little bit more sweep and belly on the Turok, but not by much. So, those are all huge positives on the more combat field, you know, defensive role department. Excellent blade. Now, when it comes to more woodscraft, finer work, I've always found that the giant swedge on the Turok sometimes gets in the way. It's gonna destroy your batoning stick because it's so thin, and there's not a lot of placement points. You basically have to choke way up to do any sort of like thumb push cut. At least you get about half a blade's worth with the K-Bar, and it's just a lot, or the Spartan Harsey. I'm gonna try and just say Spartan. Uh, even up here, it's pretty flat, and I can still get some good pressure to do some sort of a notch or some sort of finer wood based craft um, if necessary. And it won't damage your batoning stick quite as much as on the Turok. So that's just, just something to consider. Then on the handle, the Turok handle is fine and it doesn't have any jimping anywhere. It's rounded, it's ergonomic. The bolts tend to stick out just ever so slightly, it's something I noticed, um, you know, and fills out the hand nicely, but it's just a, a simple polymer with not a lot of traction. You get a lot more traction points with the Spartan with that ribbing, it's just a little bit fuller to me. The awesome flare here, you don't even need a lanyard to chop with this thing. If you need to delimb some stuff, you're gonna definitely need a lanyard just with the handle just construction of the Turok. It's gonna fly right out of your hand. Uh, and then with the jimping and the guard kind of flaring, it's just a better stabbing traction points and more piercing combative rolls with the um, Spartan than what you're gonna get on the Turok a little bit more outdoor woods focused, I would argue for the Turok. So just depends on kind of what you're looking for and what you need. Still a great option in that kind of combative role and it'll save you, you know, 40 bucks potentially depending on what you're doing. But guys, I wanna pause here for a moment to say thank you to you, the viewers. You are amazing. Without you, I couldn't do what I do and I couldn't create content and wouldn't be able to without your guys' regular viewership here. And I wanna be honest with you, as a content creator, all of us on YouTube, the payouts that we get through AdSense are a joke. And so it's you guys using the affiliate networks that are always offered to you. And I'll have all the blades that we're talking about today offered to you in the description below this video. But it's also the sponsors that regularly partner with me here at the channel that help me to continue to create content. And so I wanna to highlight today's sponsor, which is Huckberry and the Proof Apparel line that they carry. For the last several months, I've been using their 72-hour base layer of short sleeve and long sleeve shirts. 
which has an epic 87% New Zealand sourced wool with 13% nylon blend. So it temperature regulates and feels so comfortable as your base layer with short sleeve or long sleeve variants. Perfect day to be wearing my proof long sleeve shirt. It was a little bit warm in the morning, but because of the wool, it breathes really nice and I didn't feel like I had to strip off anything. And now the a storm's coming in. We're getting to get some snow tonight. So it's raining slash snowing right now and it's keeping me warm. So it's doing that crossover job super well. Or if you want to dress it up, you can throw on the 72 hour polo when style and performance are required. And for the last six months, I've been running these in tandem with the Proof Rover pants. That unlike other canvas work pants, these have a built-in moisture wicking technology that helps keep you dry without losing durability. And that's just the tip of the iceberg of the Adventure Focus Apparel designed by Proof. And so regardless if it's the Proof series or other excellent gear and equipment for your next adventure, I do invite you to go check out Huckberry. I'll have a link in the description below this video, as well as my exclusive 10% off promo code, which goes towards your very first purchase. And so I invite you to hop on over there and see all that they have to offer. Now, I know a lot of you guys are curious about this one and how it compares, in my opinion, with the SRK from Cold Steel. Uh, I'm running in the Gerber strong arm soon, pillar. We got still hang in there. We got so many cool blades to just kind of discuss. How does it perform? How does it, what's, what's the capability? So right here, I have the cold steel. This is the old ones made in Italy, CPM 3V steel. Now they're made in Taiwan with that same steel. You can get them for about 140 to 160. So very similar pricing and CPM 3V steel is way going to outperform the 1095. Crovan on this blade. Easier to sharpen, much better edge retention, arguably much better toughness on the 3V steel. Uh, and made in Taiwan, one of our partners, you know, one of our allies. So that's great. I know even Spartan Blades partners with some Taiwanese manufacturing for one of their tools, I believe. So I have no issues or qualms with that. This is an excellent blade. I'm gonna be more rust resistant as well. You can see though, it's still gonna have a lower grind than what we're gonna get on the Harsey fighter. That is one of the big benefits. When they brought up that grind, a lot of these blades that you're seeing have lower grinds. So um, the same thickness, there's about, now obviously it has the Kraton handle, you know, over years and years and years, we could see possible wearing on that. I've never had that happen on any of my models, but you know, I've heard stories. This, you're never gonna have a wear out because of the type of polymer handles, scales that they went with. And then you're gonna get a nice, good clip point piercing, you know, straight down the middle there. Definitely less belly as well. You're just gonna get less belly. So this is definitely, I would say, way more focused on piercing and utility tasks, combative roles and utility roles over an outdoor roles. That doesn't mean the SRK isn't, isn't an epic tool and you're gonna get a lot uh, for the money in the polymer sheath, all that stuff. But that's just something to consider and think through. What am I gonna really be doing with the tool? What makes more sense? What environment? Uh, am I in really human environments? Then maybe you know the 3V makes more sense. And I just have the S1 here. Even though the, the Spartan is actually similar to the A1, that's a $200 knife. This one is about 150. The, the Spartan, they just really hammered it, man. I mean, it's, it's kind of ridiculous. Oh, here we go. Here's some fun to discuss. Uh, I have two Tops knives. Let's look at the Prather, Prather, Bowie first, <laughs> like a Tyrannosaurus claw. Higher grind than what you would get on the K-Bar, which means it's gonna be slicier. Still being nice and thick. Uh, I believe that's a quarter inch thickness right there, so it's gonna be thicker. And I believe you're gonna get about an eight inch blade reach, definitely significantly more than what you're gonna get on the six inch Spartan blade. So for a lot of tasks that you're gonna get a lot more reach. And if so if that's something that you need or you feel like you want with that massive swedge, this is gonna give you a lot of not only field capability, meaning like uh, triggers, traps, you know, uh, trip wire uh, attachment for a Claymore mine, you know, like whatever, that blade is gonna do a lot of those type of tasks, but still giving you amazing piercing power in a self-defense role if necessary. One aspect though, that I really appreciate on the two other models we're gonna see here on the table, you know, with the Spartan blades, the, the handle comes all the way down. So the G10, or excuse me, the polymer in this case, G10 on the um, tops, contours around the guard. So you have just a wider impact point when you're piercing, stabbing. 
um, and when you're carving. This does not give you that. It's just a, a general handle scale. Then you just have metal here. Now it's not terrible and it will totally lock you into place. You're not gonna accidentally ride up on that blade if you're holding that and then you're gonna pierce and stab. But it's just, it's thinner. It's a thinner contact point, you know, whereas if the scale had come down and wrapped around that, it would have just been more comfortable. So think through that a little bit when you are considering your tools, regardless of it's for outdoors, woodscraft, or for more combative roles, you know, that's something to definitely consider. And I think these guys, I don't even know the price right now on these, maybe like 160, and it comes with bogus nylon sheets, so you gotta do a custom upgrade of some kind. Um, now on the tops, Apache Dawn here, very similar profile as we can see. Um, you're gonna get, when you line up the edges, it's the same edge length, but because of the choil, which is fully functional, you are gonna get about an inch almost longer reach. I do believe this is a maybe 6.75 inch overall blade length. Uh, quarter inch thick as well. So this is definitely a heavier instrument. So if you are wanting quick in the hand, you know, the cable, the Spartan is definitely quicker with that. Great swedging though. So you are still gonna get a lot of piercing power, more strength for that piercing power in this particular model. Because of the choil, we could argue you can really choke up get finer control, great relief edge on that, but a very low grind, just to give you like half as high a grind as what you're gonna be getting on the K-Bar Spartan blade here. So when you're thinking of that, that even though the relief edge is good and you can get some decent work done, if you want a lot of woodworking, I'm gonna argue that the higher grind is always gonna be the way you're gonna to wanna to go over lower grinds. The lower grind is still functional, but it's more of a pry bar than you know necessary. Uh, and then you do have the cut-ins, the wraparound handle G10, so that's excellent. Those guys are about $20 more than the K-Bar. I think they're running like 150, 160 when available. Bogus nylon sheath again. That's where the K-Bar has a leg up in the, the Spartan because of the nice polymer. Um, Spec Ops, you can get the eight inch. This is the eight inch model. Nylon sheath with a Kydex insert does really well if you don't want to spend the extra money. We're going to park here for a minute because this is a big one. So we got the SOG Pillar USA made CPM S35BN steel under $200. And then we have the USA made Gerber Strongarm 420HC steel. About currently about 80 bucks. Oh, look at that spit, man. I just got super excited. Um, 80 to $90, man, I remember the days when these were 50 freaking dollars, man. And if that was the case, it would still be like the most epic tool at $80. Let's talk about that a little bit. So one thing is reach. So uh, you have to determine for yourself, how much reach do I need? How much penetration do I want? At six inches, you're getting a lot of reach. These are both gonna be about five inch reaches. So you're losing some of that capability there. The positive side is they're gonna be very light and they're gonna be just an overall smaller package to carry. So if you're thinking of strapping this to an LBE system, things like that, these are gonna be a lot more modular and a lot more easily attached and just gonna take up less weight and footprint. Easier to store somewhere, get under a piece of equipment, attached to a belt necessarily, depending on what you're doing. So that's something to consider. Still great combat utility knives, field knives. Now we're gonna focus more on the pillar here first the prices are all over the place. I've seen them as low as like almost 150, all the way up to almost 200. Kind of goes all over the place. There are, this is the like stone wash finish. They do have coated versions as well. Those tend to be more expensive. So if reflection, stealth is something that you're thinking of, just take that into consideration as well. The stock model is, you know, vibrant, right? Flat grinds on both of these blades. Um, the cutting edge is even smaller. You know, when you actually line up the cutting edge, I mean, we're talking like four and a half. All, the huge sharpening Ricasso, you could use it as a choil, I have. So if that's something you like. Um, definitely enough scoop to not get caught up on rope. And I, I didn't highlight this in the original video. This is so cool. The Harsey here, Spartan, has an angled sharpening choil. So if, if cordage ever gets in there, it just slides right off. So it doesn't snag on netting and cordage. Some knives don't offer that. And this one, thankfully, hasn't a good enough sweep. It wouldn't happen either. Great full tank construction. The pins are definitely smaller. Micarta, that's a nice feel to it. Good blocky jimping, you know, and those scales contour all the way around that guard. So that's excellent. 90 degree spine. You know, I mean, it's a great combat utility knife with excellent um, stainless steel K 
capability, better edge retention than either of these blades by far, but still pretty easy to resharpen the field. So for field sharpening, not at all something to be co complaining about. And it does have that polymer, I believe it's Kydex sheath. I've never had an issue with it. Much smaller, you can see there, than the footprint. Um, you know, some you can do blade tech locks, molly locks, good um, lock up, and just a smaller overall footprint to put. I mean, you can see the whole footprint there is the size of you know the K bar. So, in a lot of ways, there's a lot to like about that, particularly if you want a more compact tool. Now, uh, for the Gerber strong arm, <clears throat> one of the best lashing optioned sheaths, ambidextrous sheath. You, you know, rotate it back and forth. So, if lashing points is something that you're really considering and need. The Gerber is by far one of the best on the market still and has so many different ways to attach. Um, and boom, good deployment, good lockup, zero issues there. So that is a big selling point. 90 degree spine, you don't get that on the K-Bar, so I'm just re relaying that for fire steels. Thinner handle by far as well than on the Spartan. Flaring out, you know, definitely more of a dagger-esque vibe. Lower grind again. Way thicker tip. So this is something I wanted to highlight. And in fact, I believe both of these tools, yeah, are going to have, hopefully this is going to show up on frame well. It goes Spartan, Gerber, and then the SOG. You can see the, the Spartan actually has the thinnest tip, which means it'll t arguably pierce for penetration the best for just durability sake, if you're just gonna be an animal and treat it like a pry bar, the Gerber by far is like the best. I mean, this has gone through the ringer so, so many times. And it, and it really is a sharp and pry bar, the Gerber. Not gonna pierce through things quite as well. And then uh, same with the, the SOG, that has a really good piercing point, better than the Gerber, um, but still has really good thickness there. So something to consider, depending on what you're doing with the tools, and for general, just kind of do everything. If you're gonna go with a smaller package, the Gerber is great, but the 420 HC is super tough, just doesn't hold its edge very long. And um, you know, between these two, if I have the money, I'm gonna go with the pillar over the Gerber, but for 80 bucks, you know, depending, you can buy two Gerbers for the price of one SOG. So just hopefully that helps you guys out a little bit. But if you want just straight up toughness, in a compact package, the Gerber, I believe, is still like top dog just because of the, the type of steel and the type of tip that goes into that means that it's just a brute force instrument. But on a camping trip, these two blades are going to outperform it easily in general utility tasks. Now, I know throughout this video, I've been talking a lot how the Spartan really, in many ways, outperforms many of the other tools just mainly in design than some of the other blades. Hang with me. There is at least one model that I'm about to run in that I would argue harder to get your hands on, but in many ways is even better designed than this. Uh, so stick with me here. What we have with the BK-18 down here is basically a mini version of the um, Spartan. So if you like the Spartan, you're just like, it's just too big. I like the profile, I like the idea. This BK-18 is just so cool. H huge belly, even better. Higher grind and better sweep than what you're gonna get. So for outdoor use, I'm gonna argue it's better. It's com more compact. You're not gonna baton or chop with it really at all. And still has a pretty good platform. You can get at least halfway up that blade before you start hitting on that, you know, swedge there. 1095 Crovan, American made, full tang. Uh, this poop color, uh, you, they do have black versions now as well. Um, my car to handle scales, I upgraded to good polymer sheath, you know I mean? Very similar, really nice, solid, ambidextrous, swap it, boom, good thumb ramp, been great retention over the years, about $100. And then if you upgrade to the Micarta, you're about the same price, maybe $10 more than the, the Spartan. So for a more compact tool, now the handle is definitely like a little bit more narrow. We have that exposed guard, so to consider, you know, but there's a lot to like about the BK-18 and doesn't get as much praise as I think it probably should just because of its size there. Now on the flip side, if you just want like the cheapest, best steel, the Rat 6 with S35EN, American made, it's hard to beat, about 160, 165. So not much more, excellent steel, gonna way outperform in edge retention as well as in um, rust resistance compared to the Spartan. Full flat grind, so definitely more outdoor focus, but still has a, a, a more of a spear point tip. So good piercing, did some amazing piercing tests with that. This thing is super, super tough. 
Go watch that video if you haven't watched that. I did some crazy lateral stuff. Um, the blockiest freaking scales in the world. Not a fan of these handles. Wish that they would start doing what SE has done over the years and just contour those things. Because um, there is a hot spot if you're doing like feather sticks and stuff. I would rather do it with this uh, Spartan unless you use the choil. And some of you don't like choils, you lose you know some of the blade, all that stuff. Basic nylon sheath, not ideal. Um, the handle ergonomics on the Spartan way outperform what is going to be on this guy here. But if you like to kind of contour machine or you don't give a rip and you already own like a, a Rat 7, that's a great option to consider if you want better steel and still giving you a lot of piercing power but better outdoor performance because of the full flat, it will be a better outdoor performer than, uh, meaning like for outdoor tasks, than the Spartan will. Now these blades are kind of interesting and I hope to unpack this. We all know the Buck 119 profile. Now this is the Pro, so S35VN, this is like a $200 knife, but we know the 420HC version um, with the phenelic, phonetic, I don't know, phenelic type of handle, handle material, all that. Stick tang, you know, tang comes down to here. Um, 0.17, so not quite as thick as on the Spartan. Hollow grind, clip point, very reminiscent of that K-Bar fighting knife style. Uh, I'm gonna tell, I, I'm gonna say, if you're bringing like a saw and a hatchet and you're going camping, right? And you're, you're looking at like an outdoor tool and you kind of like this idea, you don't want like a dedicated bushcraft knife with like a scanty grind or something, you know, the Nomad, the Nomad 6.5 just isn't really your flair, your vibe. Even though this is an epic outdoor tool, I would never take it like as a crossover, you know, combat knife. It's not at all that. So you like a lot of this, right? I, I, if you were to tell me like, let's go camping. We got a hatchet or an axe and we got a saw. I'm going to take this buck over this design any day of the week for a few reasons. One is the hollow grind. If you've never used one of these is bananas at food prep in outdoor tasks, carving, whittling, notching. It is nuts. If you've never used one, I would I would recommend picking one up for that purpose because it is just so cool in that regard. And it will easily out carve, out feather stick and out food prep either of these tools that you're seeing here and most of the other tools that you're gonna see here. The downside is that it is, you know, that hollow grind, it's just not designed with all these, you know, pieces. I've never had one loosen up on me but I'm just not gonna go wailing through wood and batoning and trying to chop down trees and do all this stuff. It's just not designed for that. It's a knife that is a knife that is designed to be a knife. Decent, and I know a lot of guys, particularly I believe in Vietnam, did carry this tool, as from my understanding with your guys' comments and stuff, for defensive tool. Now, by no means does it have quite the traction and aspects that the Harsi has, Spartan, and many of these other tools because of the, the you know insulated kind of slick handle design. But that is something you could definitely put, you know, push it into those roles. It has a 90 degree spine um, and has a very organic ergonomic. I've never had issues with ergos. That small guard there is all rounded. It's all contoured. There's no sharp angles. Very easy to overcome, you know, and get great grip in. So for camping, you know, and the HC version is like $75, I believe currently. So you could easily save some money and get that compact hatchet or a saw, you know, in comparison for outdoors, more outdoor, you know, uh, tasks is what I would argue. Now I have here the T5 from Line Steel, Sleipner Steel, better steel than the 420 HC that would come on the stock version or the um, Crovan uh, over here. Definitely better edge retention, high flat grind. I'm, it's the same, it's higher, it's higher. So we know what, what we're gonna say there, better for outdoor woods working. Definitely smaller blade length. I mean, almost two inches smaller on this model. Um, nice full tank construction. Amazingly, com if you want comfort, this is definitely way more comfortable than this. This is still good, very, very good. But this is just insane comfort. Look at that guard. It's all micarta. So, I mean, it's just like, oh, delish. Uh, crowned spine. So, it's not, doesn't cause any hot spots there. 90 degree spine portion. Huge swedge, great piercing power. Great piercing power right there. Very similar, I would argue, to what the Spartan is gonna give you. Again, more compact package though. So take that in consideration. This is um, the uncoated version. You can get um, coated versions as well. Leather sheath with molly attaching. So not quite as modular as some sheaths that we've looked at, but for a leather sheath, pretty modular, man. Um, and you can do a lot with it, particularly if you're a righty. Lefty, you might be a little out of luck, but for a righty, excellent. 
And these guys go for, I want to say, like 160 to 170. Now, some of you may ask me, well, what about the T6? T6 would be size comparative to this, but it's so much more expensive. It's like $300. I mean, so, so much more expensive. Um, so, I, I, you know, that's part of the value point with this as well is like, for just over $100, you can get your hands on an excellent design combat knife. Just a few left here, guys. Now, I had to bring this in. I don't know what you guys are thinking. I saw some comments when I did the original Spartan video that, oh, bro, combat knife? Um, BK9 all the way, dude. Uh, I don't know who's using this in a deployment role combat knife. This thing is a brute. It's an amazing wilderness folder, and I guess if I had to go up against a bear, I would want this. But this is a beast and very front heavy, huge platform. Guidex, baby. Look at that. Mm, that's hot. Um, but you're going to have to upgrade everything. You know, I mean, like they're like 120, 130, I think, maybe a little bit more. But so very similar pricing, but, you know, slick handles. So you got to get my card in my opinion, or G10. Then you get, you know, leather, kydex sheath. I mean, we're way over $200 at this point. And it's just so massive. It's a great chopper, great batoner. But I mean, uh, yeah, this is just way more like carryable, a lot more scenarios, a lot faster and quicker in the hand. I would take that any day of the week. And I already talked about the BK7 in my previous video. So again, if you haven't watched that, go check that out where I run in the BK7. I'm not going to rehash that in this particular video. So as we come to an end, here we go, guys. The blade that I think in many ways we could argue would outperform on almost every level this tool is the Work Tough Elbrus. The Work Tough Elbrus, baby. Now, this um, is made in Taiwan by a small factory. So they do batches, basically. That's, that's why I was saying it's kind of hard to get your hands on. Um, it is SK85 steel. They do differential heat treat, rock weld 56 to 58, same as this. I have never seen any difference in edge retention and toughness performance with what Work Tough does with that steel in comparison to like an SE6 or K bars, BK7s, and all that. So, the, the reason I say this, and it's gonna be a little bit more, I think it's like when they are available, like maybe 150 or 160, G10 handles, ribbed, just like what we were talking about. We got flaring, jimping, and a deep guard, fully contoured right there. So, I mean, you are fully locked in scalloped similarly to what we have on that Harsey. Good uh, bird beak right there with a lanyard hole, three screws, full tank construction. Um, that, so you're even able to like, you know, if you did a, had to pull back, that's what you can do with this. You can do that as well, you know, so it's not just like straight off the back. Choil, so you can choke up and get even better grip. A swedge, this is like one of the coolest swedges I've ever seen, a swedge but it's super thick with into that drop and an excellent tip that is slightly, no, it's about the same. I'm gonna say they're the same thickness, but it's a little thicker throughout, so there's more strength and you're gonna get same grind height. So, uh, and it, this will be probably about an ounce heavier if I remember correctly. So that is, in my opinion, probably the closest competitive option um, to this for like all of the very similar things and gives you a little bit more capability even than an SE6 does, mainly because of the slight flaring up of the jimping, a little just a little bit more traction, and then the swedging and a little bit more of a drop for a better piercing overall performance. So not to say again that the K-Bar is not one of the best and probably, and, and it comes with the Kydex sheath, ambidextrous. Boom, that, that Elbrus. So um, check that out. Again, those will be provided below. But combat knives, so cool. Really giving you a lot of capability. Let me know what your favorite was on the list. Leave a comment below. And uh, let me know what you think about this Spartan K-Bar collaboration, Harsey Fighter. And I just appreciate you guys so much for coming over today, spending your time. I hope it's been fun and entertaining. For those knife lovers out there, thank you so much. You guys are amazing. And until next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and I'll see you out there.